Checking in with my peeps. Checking in with my peeps. Happy noon o'clock on Monday. Laura's checking in. How y'all doing? With her peeps. Yes! Hello! Happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Oh my God, we are on, uh, what are we, week eight of this uh, quarantine situation. I did some math here and I realized I've been doing these checking in with my peeps now for five weeks, over a month. And uh, it's just giving me life. Hearing how other people are faring, um, sharing my peeps with you guys. These are people that I just love and adore and some I haven't seen in a long time. And uh, they're just, you know, all walks of life sharing different things that they have been doing to maneuver through these times. Um, I hope everyone is safe and healthy out there. And um, let this be a reminder that uh, obviously that we're in this together and that if you haven't reached out to some of your peeps, now's the time, now's the time, right? So, to, uh, so I reached out to my buddy, oh, my son, my this is us son. Uh, a couple weeks ago, he's been a busy, busy guy, which has been so exciting to watch. And um, I let him know, I just said to him, dude, I need some good news. We need some good news, man. Right now, through all of this, uh, I want you to come on and share this exciting thing that's been happening in your life. You guys, if you haven't watched Never Have I Ever on Netflix, I just started watching it to see my boy Darren kill it. It is so wonderful. It is the best. Mindy Kaling, man, every time, every time, but she was the smartest to get my boy Darren on the show because, oh my God, hubba hubba to all the ladies out there. He is just, here's the thing. Here's the thing about my boy Darren. Uh, he is just as beautiful inside as he is on the outside. And I'm not just saying that. He is really the real deal. He is just such a lovely human being. Paxton! Paxton is in the house from Never Have I Ever. My boy, Darren Barnett, who uh, was my son, is my son, we don't know, on This Is Us, season one. Uh, we gotta get him on, so. For what I'm on, cause who's gonna stop me? Yes! What up, TV mom? Oh my God, this is fantastic! What's How up, are you? Oh good, I'm good. I'm I drinking said... coffee out of a beer mug, so that's I'm great. Drinking, I'm drinking my tea. Cheers. A little tea out of my Lake Tahoe mug. What? Yes. I, don't know. I'm, I guess I'm missing nature. How are you? Oh my God, it looks like you've showered. I'm. I've tried. I've tried to tame the beast that is my hair right now. It's really long and poofy so i'm like te I, I took some time for you this morning i want to look good for my tv mom you okay, know so wait a minute you so you haven't cut your hair you haven't you haven't attempted to do that yet mm -mm. Oh, it's like oh my god it's like that's the thing i miss the most i got the gray roots i need a i need a haircut so desperately that's the thing i am missing right now for yeah sure. i would like that but you know what i think i might just let it go and i might put it into a samurai bun i don't know I love that. My friend Andy Hawks was on a couple weeks ago. He's got this ponytail happening. He's got a, a, a sensitive ponytail man happening. Might be coming. It might be coming. We don't know. Dude, how I'm just are so you? excited. Look at all these people that are on to see you and to hear how you've been maneuvering through this. How beautiful is that? I love it. Oh I love God. it so much. This is amazing. Okay, so we have to talk about this. I just started watching it. Darren. Dude. It, you're Does mom it. approve? Oh my God, you, you're killing it. Oh my God. See, Thank I've you. seen some videos that you had done because you were filming stuff because you also are directing and producing. You do your own stuff too. And you did some stuff and I saw it. And I was like, damn, he's really, he's really good at comedy. Because of course I only know you as, you know, doing drama, which by the way, <clears throat> that this is a scene that we have. First of all, it's on my reel. I just love that scene so much. Isn't it a beautiful scene? That was such a special moment to me. Yeah. That was 
for anyone that wants to know, that was, I mean, I, I don't think I even told you this on set because I was trying to be part of the gang, but that was my first role. Like that was the first thing I'd ever really done. And um, what a special moment to be on Paramount, you know, the most nostalgic lot. It's, it was so much fun. Oh my God. I, I, I can't, what, that's a hell of a first gig too. That's a hell of a first gig. I couldn't believe that. I was, that was one of those things where I was like, I auditioned, booked, working like the next day. So you didn't even have time to process. It was I'm so on the random. One show. I'm on the number one show. And now, yet again, you're on a number one show. Yeah. Quarantine, that's what everybody's been watching. Everybody's been watching that. You know what really blew my mind? Look, I knew the show would do well I, I, because it's Mindy Kaling and it's great writing and, and all that. But but I didn't know my character would be such a focal point. And I woke up yesterday and you know what I realized? My mom sent it to me. My, my, my real life mom. You're my TV mom. That's okay. But she, I'm number four on IMDb right now. So I don't even know what that means. You know but... what that means? It's Brad Pitt status, buddy. It's Brad Pitt status. Yes. Oh! Life is complete. Yes. 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 I want to say. Because you're so good on it. I want to say hi to everybody real quick. Hey, oh, yes. everyone. Thank you for being here. Much love to all of you. How, how so happy to see you. This is so incredible. Look at all these people chiming in. You are stupid hot. Right on. We know that. Oh, my God. He's so cute. He's so cute. Oh my no, God, that, that's my cousin. That's my cousin. J-N-M-K-1 or whatever it is. That's my that's little cousin. cousin. Hey, cousin. He told me he was gonna. He told me he was gonna sell my phone number online. <laughs> I, have, I, I hey, think hey, I'm gonna hey, have his father's You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, so how is how has your family been faring? I don't want to get into you, but what what since your cousin just came up? Do they live here? Yeah, my my I have uh, I have a cousin and an aunt down in Palm Springs and then my other my two cousins and my uncle and aunt live in uh Calabasas I believe okay and um other than that yeah most of my family is back in Ohio where my mom grew up um my mom is lives in Cleveland currently and my steps my my stepfather and sister little sister live here in Sherman Oaks and then my older sister lives in Vegas with her husband so, so how have you been communicating with them? Or do you do you Zoom? Do you do Zoom uh, family meetings or FaceTime? We did that for um, what was it Easter? Yeah, we did it for Easter. It was cool. And then other than that, it's just been FaceTimes and you know trying to stay in touch that way. I I didn't realize how busy I would be. I thought you know the show would come out, and I didn't. the The thought of publicity wasn't even really in my head. Right. You know? Right. So that has been a huge part of life lately but I, I love it because it's something to keep me in a schedule you know right right so it just yeah, keeps you, me having something to do other than right really busy so so did you just wake up as soon as it hit and all of a sudden saw that your instagram was like off the charts did that just yeah overnight? yeah as soon as I, I was up at midnight when the show dropped it was so weird and i felt like this was so i don't know what do you call it serendipitous or it was just very meant to happen like my internet in my 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 place has never gone out before and midnight came and the show dropped on netflix and my internet went completely out oh, yeah. and i couldn't watch the show i was reluctant to really check my phone because i don't want to use my data you know whatever because i didn't right. have wi-fi right so i had to i just at midnight i was like expecting to sit there and kind of watch the numbers go up and then see people commenting on the show right midnight came and i just went to sleep and then I woke up and my internet was working and it was almost like, I feel like the world was like, hey man, take a step back. It's about to get crazy, you know, go to sleep and then we'll, we'll reconvene in the morning. I love so, that. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was crazy. So yeah, wow. it's, it's been a lot, but it's been, everyone's been so, I mean, the fans are so sweet and I, I really adore them. I mean, they're all, if I read the, I, people tell me not to read the comments, you know, they're like, yeah. if you're sensitive, don't read the comments. And I'm not really seeing you know anything bad yet it's it's it's, it's all kindness and, and and love for well, the show I think and it's, it's awesome. awesome because you set the tone you know you can see this is the one thing i love about social media that you get to connect with people that you would not you know normally not con connect with or, or reconnect right um but that uh they get they you know they can see who you are they can see who you are from your feet you are a person who you know what i mean they yeah know that you're not you know 
you're not a showboat or, you know, a Johnny come lately. You know, you've been doing this for a minute, even though you're younger, you've been mm. doing this for a minute and um, you're just having so much fun, you know, and I, just, a lot I, think, of fun. I think your soul kind of comes out that way. Yeah, I, I try to always be honest and, and real and, and, you know, raw in my interviews and, and my videos and stuff like that. So I, if that translates, then, then I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, you're doing a great job, man. You're doing, well, because you're being yourself. And let me tell you, that's easier said than done. That is easier said than done, you know? It's like jumping into that publicity fire is like, whoa. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've had, like, you know, pic even just taking pictures. You just got, like, weird faces happening. You know, you're just like a deer in headlights. And, like, pictures are going to be what's interesting because right now I would be, you know, racing all over town. I um, know. And it's, it's, it's nice being able to do it from the comfortability of my, you know, my living room. But... It's like, yeah, if I were having to go, I'd probably have to have like a makeup department and then right. you do have a hair department and a stylist. stylist. And all that I can stuff. wake up and get out of the shower and just, you know, it's, you it's will. great. You will though soon. Hopefully, you know, we'll see what's happening here. I just yeah, to, I'm I just down with that. To, to a uh, SAG uh, uh, town hall meeting this morning. Did you go to that? No, I no, I got what, how the industry is going to fare in the next, you know, months here go, moving forward. It was really yeah. interesting, you know, because a lot of people don't realize that we, well, you know, a lot of people probably do that, that are watching here is that, um, you know, the film industry, there's hundreds of people on a set and they're in close proximity. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. going to be a really tough thing. Uh, you know, our industry is probably going to be one of the last ones to, you know, uh, maneuver through this, although people are coming up with creative ideas on how to maneuver through it. But, you know, it's challenging, you know, and of course. I've heard some crazy stuff. Like I've, I've heard that, um, you know, uh, makeup and hair may not be able to be on set. So it will be Scripty's job to do makeup. So in my head, I'm like, we all better learn how to do our own makeup and hair really, really well. Because right. for a scripty to have all of his their or his or her, you know, their responsibilities already, and then have to do last looks. Yeah, I'm you know, I don't. I'd be like, it's okay. I'll I'll do it. You you do what you got to do. You know, because last know, looks are important. They are. It's continuity. It's everything. Yeah, there are a lot of people who make the magic happen. That's the thing. Oh, my God. I'm trying to scroll through some of these comments. There's so many comments. Someone just asked me my favorite uh, scene of the series. And um, I would say it's the driving scene and the kissing scene with Davey and I um, after oh, the party. I, oh, I'm not there yet. Oh, oh okay. It's, I, uh, I, did I, I just spoil the show? Yeah, I, you just I need to say spoiler alert. I just said, oh, damn. I'm just I'm kidding. We get, we get into... We get into a crazy street fight, and she uppercuts me, and I wake up in Vegas. That's actually what happens. So just, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, you ruined it for me. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's Sorry, I thought my TV mom Let's would have watched the whole show by now, but, you know, she doesn't love me enough. I know, so. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. I'm getting I'm just to kidding. It. It's just so good. Um, okay, so what have you been doing during your days? Obviously, you've got a lot of publicity happening right now. Was that my, hold on, was that my, I'll teach you how to do makeup, bro. That's my little sister, Emily X Brianna. She has done my makeup before, actually. She did my makeup for, for an interview after, a, uh, for a publicity I did for something called See Me Valley a while, a while back. She did it good, too. Um, well, maybe, okay, so, that's her, maybe that's her new career that she starts. Is she a makeup artist? She could do whatever she wants to do. She, she, she has a job right now that, um, I mean, I think, you know, she enjoys somewhat, but I think she, you know, feels maybe a higher purpose somewhere, but she's young, you know, and I keep telling her, and this is something to, cool yeah, and I, I keep telling everyone out there too, like, you know, in your like, you know, early 20s and stuff like that, like, it's, it's really the time to take risks, you know, you don't have to have it all figured out at that age, and, and uh, it's, you know, everyone thinks like, oh, I'm, I'm in this job, I got, I better just see it through, because now I can grow in it, and I want to be, you know, you have a plan, but yeah, your plans yeah. always alter, yeah. you know, and you learn that the older you get. So it's, if you're in your early twenties or even younger than that or whatever, like it's time to take risks. I'm going to even go a step further and say, it's always time to. It's to always time, it but especially, learning, yeah. Keep learning and keep learning mm -hmm. and keep learning. That is the one thing that I'm grateful. I have the, I have that chip of curiosity, which to me, if, you, yeah. if you're a curious person, that it, it, that's when you investigate different things and you keep moving forward. So uh, yeah, yeah. Your, your limitations are, are created by by yourself. 
you know, so. Yeah. So be bold. Have, you been, have you been just hanging out at home? You haven't gone anywhere. Have you been doing the marketing? Have you been doing all that stuff? Uh, I've just been like staring at the wall, doing jumping jacks all day. That's pretty, pretty much it. <laughs> um, I reached I've out to been... Milo and Milo said he was doing prison workouts. And I was like, okay, so I, I can gather what that is. Obviously, stay at home, in your house, doing weights, lifting weights, doing that. You see that? That's really all I do I, is I do. I'm not, I mean, not, I'm talking, I'm talking about in terms of my workouts. Like, I always do military. People are asking me, like, what's my regiment? I really yeah. do mili military and, like, prison workouts. Like what? I do a, a lot of body weight, uh, pull-ups. I mean, if you think about what you could do inside of a jail cell, like yeah. pull-ups, push-ups, pull-ups on the bunk bed, you know, push-ups, dips, uh, mountain climbers, high-intensity interval training, and I shadow box a lot. I grew up boxing and doing martial arts, so I shadow box. I, I'll punch as fast and hard as I can to get a good cardio in and a good burn. And, do you um, do it with anybody, or do you just do it at, alone at home? Uh, I do it alone at home, and you sometimes I'll, like I'll, I'll a put a... trainer or anything? No, I've never had a trainer in my life. Um, maybe, you know, one day if I need to put on an extensive amount of muscle, but I think that's more of a nutrition job because... Yeah. My metabolism is quick, so it's I'd have to eat an insane amount of food to get like Thor big, you know. Yeah. I don't even know if that's possible for my body, but so how you know. long do you how long do you work out for? I've been, I've, I'll be honest with you, I've been having a hard time getting motivated. I have a lot of stops and starts with working out right now. It's just like it depends on like if I turn on the news in the morning, I'm just like uh, sometimes I can get the buckets. What, sure. Uh, <laughs> the buckets. What, but you but you are so you're so motivated. You're I mean you're so disciplined that way. Um, mm. how long do you, how long do you, what's your regimen? How, how long do you work out for? I honestly, my workouts only last about 20, 30 minutes, but I'm telling you like people that do them with me, yeah. they, they're like, I've been to the, I've been to the gym for two hours and I've never been this tired. Really? Okay. So you're yeah. hardcore. You're hardcore. It's, it's rough, but it's like a good 20, 30 minutes where you're good for the whole day, possibly two days. So Holy it's. Moment. Okay, so what are you doing? Are you are you ordering takeout or are you cooking at home? No, my, my mom has been my mom has been like the end all of like paranoia and precaution for yeah. this whole thing. And she lives in Cleveland, and you know, she she set me up with Instacart, which is like a food delivery service. So I love your mom. Grocery, yeah, is, it's amazing. Is your mom on this? I she stocked me up. Out. I don't know if she is. I told her about okay, it. She well, actually sent me the replay, and I'm giving she, her a shout out. You're a great mom. Happy related <laughs> Mother's Day. She is. She's an awesome a wonderful mom. kid. Okay. Um. So she's been doing Instacart for you. She's been doing Instacart, and she actually sent me. It's funny. She texted me a photo of a quote that you posted, I believe, about Andy Warhol. Oh yes, about art. Like just art with with like let others judge if it's good or not, and while they're judging make more art make you know? more art Who gets and she it? she sent that to me this morning from your page and i was like it's lately kind of exactly what i needed here because it's i've been trying i've been writing so much and trying to just it's so easy to like to, to sit get halfway through a script and just be like because you've read it so many times you're like oh it's a it's a piece of shit yeah. and then you want to crumple it up and throw it away right. but that's such an that's such a true quote like yeah. let others decide if it's good or not yeah. and while they're deciding just make more just keep going yeah just keep going yeah, Love yeah. It. I mean, that's how I started this. I was like, you know, I really, I really want to check in with peeps. I'm not a millennial. I'm not a, you know, you know me. I'm not necessarily an uh, Insta Live person. And yeah. I was like, no, I'm dying to hear about what, what everybody, how everybody's despairing. It's like, just keep. Not that this is art, but you know what I mean. It's just like, just do, do what makes you happy. Keep moving. Keep finding new things that interest you, and don't worry about. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like what, exactly. You know, this is exactly. how I spend my time right now because, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, this is the most important thing. Like, how are my how are my peeps doing? You guys, who everybody who's watching right now, nice reminder to check in with peeps you haven't checked in for a long time. There's a lot of single people out there, and you know, sometimes it's hard to reach out. You know, so little. I think my little my little cousin Julian just called me a cutie. Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, is this the Ohio people? This is, no, this is my Calabasas little cousin. He's a stud muffin. Okay, so talk to me about, are you, are you able to, um, have you been doing like auditions through this at all or meet at any kind of meetings? I was doing a lot of cell tapes before the show dropped. Um, and I was going to be doing these open casting things and then it just, it got really busy with 
publicity and then I, I just wanted to put my energy more so behind the show and exactly you know I, I love keeping the energy and 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 the craft you know sharp right. um but recently I've, I've had I have a lot of general meetings coming up which I love is that. great so I have, I have one today and then um throughout the week and they're, they're they're continuing to pile in and um you know it's it's great because I I gotta be honest like I'm I'm grateful for every audition and, I, and even the ones that I even though self tapes have always been my Achilles heel in a way yeah. in terms of, I think I've only gotten attention off of one self tape in my life. And that was for stranger things for the role of Billy. And they yeah. called oh, me for a callback. Oh. Yeah. And that, that was the only one I've done over. I've done hundreds of them. And it's always like, I get so in my head, I have to choose my own take. I want it to be perfect. I have to set up the lights and the can It's like, it's so much that you have to deal with other than just acting. Um, so yeah, I have a, I have a Tuesday pilot group that, that we meet. In fact, after this, we, we're going to do a zoom one because a lot mm -hmm. of stuff is being done on zoom that, uh, I meet with some actors and we were keeping that muscle alive because it is a muscle. It's different. It's different it eye lines and whatnot. It's, it's a little, mm -hmm. different, you know, I stay in class. I mean, right now, like, I think my class has offered, I, I go to Will Wallace, um, acting company and he, he's amazing. He's, he, I think uh, he's Terrence Malick's son or stepson i believe oh, so he okay. comes from a long he comes from like a good industry family and, and he's directed and, and acted in a lot of films himself very very talented so he's been great but i just i haven't been able to digest the acting classes over zoom yeah you know like i need i need a body like i need to be able to touch and feel and then just you know and i'm sure there's some benefit to it and that's all we have right now but it's like i can't bring myself to do that at the moment yeah yeah, yeah. it's hard to get motivated there's that there's that block that's there. A lot of people, somebody just chimed in, have you ever done table reads? Right now there's doing, the public theater and uh, the national theater are doing some really cool things with readings uh, um, of plays and whatnot, which is really, which is really cool. That's sick. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, um, but yeah, just speaking of that, like I, I, I love auditioning, but sell tapes, like I wouldn't mind if I didn't have to do another one of those. <laughs> and I feel like it's the wave. It's the wave of the future. You know, it's. I know. Unfortunately, it it's, is. It's where it's happening right now. So, uh, yeah, I got some good resources. Bonjour, la France. Look at this. All over the world. This is crazy. Oh, my God. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Okay, so what's been the coolest thing about, about all of this that you have experienced through this? Have you, um, had, have you had people that you went to like elementary school reach out to you? Yeah, yeah. Every everyone has been coming Come on, out. Come on, the dream. Let's like let's not about pretend. Like you know, there's that little thing of like, you know what? I'll, when I am, you know, when I you, you can say you knew me when you can say you knew me when. That is it is cool. You know, it's it's really cool. I, I and it, it's all genuine from because I I mean I I think a lot of my friends and family they've known this about me that I wanted to do this yeah. at least as a back thought, you know, I've always had this interest. So I think a lot yeah. of people are like, wow, like you're, you're, you're doing it. And and the thing that I, I had, I had a moment the other day, Laura, and I'll tell you about it. It was about five years ago. I was sitting with my older sister, Jen, Jen X Barnett rhythm. She's in the comments right now. Um, love you, Jen. She's my older sister older sister we it was like five years ago we were sitting at hugo's on santa monica boulevard and i, I had just been offered a full-time job at my part-time job and they offered yeah. me a managerial position and i i turned it down and my sister at the time was like i was living with them and, and they were you know really helping me out like let me stay right. with them and she was just had this moment with me where she was like you turned down a full-time job like you you need money like you would have gotten health insurance you would have got that you would have got this like why don't you why why'd you turn it down and i was like well i want to act and she was like, I get that, but like, there's, you need to also be function in real life here, you know? And I, at the time I took it as like, she doesn't believe in me or no one believes in me. And I started crying because I was so frustrated. I'm like, no one gets it. No one gets that. This is all that matters to me. And this is all I want to do. I don't care if I'm broken. I live in my car. And I was staring uh, at Sarah Silverman, who was sitting at a booth across from me. And she was staring at me crying. And she, I saw she had this look of concern on her face. And I was looking at her and just being like, God, if I was just in your position, like I wouldn't be crying. Meaning like if I was making a living, just doing what I love to do. And I was able to come to Hugo's and 
in the middle of the day and have lunch and pay for it and be fine and have no worry in the world, I'd be making it and I'd be fine. Yeah. You know, and so I'm sitting at that booth the other day, well, not the other day, but before quarantine, where Sarah Silverman was, and I was looking back at the table I was crying at. And my friend was watching me and he's like, what's up, man? Like, are you okay? You there? And I'm like, I'm just, if I were sitting right there looking at myself right now, I would be saying he made it, like he's doing it. This kid has it all figured out. Yeah. And I'm sitting at that booth looking back at that kid being like, it doesn't change as much as you think. And, and your, your, your thoughts of like, you made it or you did it are evolve in a way, you know? And it's, it's, it's a great thought. I'm relishing in the moment. I'm so happy and I, I love it and I'm so grateful. But then it's like, you always have that thought, like what's next? Yeah. You know, and especially right now, it's so easy to think that, like what's next? Because no one knows. It's right. such an unpredictable world right now. Yeah. So well, and that, it really, uh, it really goes down. It uh, comes down to it. What, how you define success, you know? And I think when you're a little older, like myself, um, you know, my goal is always to be on a set where, I, and I always say this, where um, uh, in a character that I love to play on a set that feels like family with people I admire and respect. That for me is, is always my goal in terms of the craft of where, mm -hmm. you know, so whatever that, however that forms, because, you know, I don't, I've heard horror stories and I've been on sets where they're just nightmares. And I think to myself, I don't care if it's a number one, if it's a nightmare, I mean, that I'm sitting in a different spot right now, different age than you, but like, you know, I want to be on a set. 25, you know, 25 never looks so good, mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding, 24, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so you know it's just how you define success and the fact that you got that now that you realize that it's just you got it you got to love it you got to love what you do you got to love the craft and love you know, it i love that you're still studying and doing that stuff it's happy like, birthday it's, my my rose seven sorry i just saw a birthday i want to say somebody's it. birthday so you're better at this than i am oh my god my best. um so yeah no it's 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 and speak, coupling on that you know the, the dream of just being in a character you love and doing what you want to do I, there was a question here i just saw what would i do if i wasn't acting and i gotta say i was asked this question once in a producer session and i was like you know what i don't think i really know and that's why i want to act meaning like the thing about real life is that i am confident in myself that i could do anything i wanted to do and right. i if i wanted to start a job in the mailroom i i know one day i could maybe be probably be CEO of that company yeah, and just yeah, because yeah. I'm confident in myself and I'm, I'm, I'm a quick learner. The right. problem is I know exactly where it goes. You start at the bottom and I know where the top is and I know the roadmap already. Right. And the thing I love about acting is that I can dive into an, a million different lives and a million different professions and learn about them. But acting is the one career where I have no idea on the planet how high it's going to take me or where it's going to take me or what it's going to lead to. Right. So that's why I don't think I could do anything other than acting because maybe we like pain. We like the unpredictable nature. Well, you know what I think it is? I think it's that intoxication to the mystery of not knowing what's going to happen in a moment. So, you know, sometimes yeah. people mis mistake it as fear, you know, mm -hmm. which is, you know, you have to be brave to be an actor. There's no doubt about it. It's, a scary, yeah. you know, it's scary to put yourself out there. But it's falling in love with that this mysterious moment of not knowing that alchemy that happens between two people and not knowing what's going to transpire. Mm -hmm. And the faster you fall in love with that, it's like, it's magical. It's There's magical. nothing more intoxicating than being on set and doing that. Because it's, it's, I feel like a gladiator sometimes. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm stepping into an arena and I have no idea, like, when a lion is going to try and jump on my shoulder and I have to be able to react and just be in the moment enough to deal with everything going on around me yeah you know it's like I mean, that's, how, that's how i felt when we did uh, when when we were on this is us and you were playing my son we had that moment that we, i mean i felt it i don't know if you did where we just I had this hundred percent felt that it was so quick yeah the thing about it it's like you keep chasing it you keep chasing it it's just these mm -hmm. little moments that happen but that was so connected and you know what I mean? It was just, I it, was right there with you. You were right there with me. It was really and that's what made it flow. Cause you, you trusted me and I trusted you, yeah. you know? And I was on the side of the, I was on the side outside of the, um, the set in the pitch black dark waiting for my entrance, shadow boxing, just trying to, cause, uh, trying to get my heart rate up. Cause you know, coming in, I'm like breaking the fight up. And I was sitting out there just ba almost banging against the wall. I was going nuts. Cause it was oh, my I first. It was my first role, and I'm like, I gotta bring it, I gotta bring it, and um, yeah, it it, it was nuts. 
It was totally nuts. You know, speaking of, coupling on that, when it comes to like acting, someone was saying sometime, one time to me, like jokingly, they're like, oh, actors, like you like lie for a living. And I'm like, I don't think so. I was like, I think acting is maybe the most honest form of communication on the planet. And they were like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, in a normal conversation, you inherent, you can't help but to think about what you're going to say because you want to keep the conversation flowing. So while you're speaking to me, I'm already thinking about what I'm going to say in response so we can keep the conversation organically flowing. In acting, I already know exactly what I'm going to say. Yeah. So my job is to be as present and vulnerable and affected as possible with everything that you say. And this is why, like, if, if any actors are here and want a tip for me, one thing I do do is that I only memorize, like, the last two words of what my co-star says. So I'm forced to listen to everything that they say and I just have my cue with those last two words. Right. You know, so I, I think it's such an honest form of communication because I'm so present. I have to be more present than ever. And I don't have to think about what I'm going to say because I already know it. It's in the script, right. you know. Right. It's so true. But it is both right and left brain because they're words you have to know. And, you, you know, so it, it definitely, uh, which I love too. It's frustrating sometimes for me, which is why I love improv sometimes, you know. So fun. And, um, you know, so, okay, so what would be i have to ask you this now because you're kind of in this beautiful position right now what would be your dream gig what's your dream role if david fincher wanted to make like david a fight fincher! if david fincher wanted to make like a fight club spinoff i would love to play like a tyler durden-esque character like brad pitt in um in fight club um i would love to take on like a young joker one day um, oh i love I, it i would love to replicate a lot of you know the artistic choices that like Leo DiCaprio, Johnny Depp, Brad Pitt have made. Um, and I gotta say, last night I watched one of the best films I've ever seen, and it was Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I've never seen it before. Oh, you haven't? This movie blew me away. Oh, it's so good. 1969, Robert Redford, Paul Newman. The acting was bar none some of the best I've ever seen. And the writing was so fresh. Like, even today, it was, if I saw it today, I'd be like, that is some fresh writing. Well, you know what's interesting about Paul Newman and Robert Redford is they were so ahead of their time because, I mean, that was just when uh, uh, Strasburg and method acting was coming to play. Look, we're talking about acting. How fun is this? This is my favorite <laughs> subject. I can talk about Love it. Where the, you know, the cows come home. But, um, you know, in that, in that time, it was you know how the acting styles have changed, right? 100%. You, know, you, look, you look at movies in the 40s, you look at movies, you know, but they kind of just, this naturalism of, you know, being in the moment was, I mean, it's just like, it's palpable, right? You, and you could tell how much they loved each other. I, they well, they, and they had you. Them. Yeah. It's not, it's not presentational. Like, it, mm -mm. you know, like, like back in the day. And it wasn't I, that I, whole transatlant transatlantic or mid-Atlantic, like, weird accent that everyone had during that time they like i think they were starting to break away from that because i was going into the 70s right right and right. it was just oh my god it's so anybody that well, it's that is interested butch cassidy and the sundance kid paul newman paul newman, newman. robert Hello. redford robert redford i never realized this before but robert redford i think was like the first brad pitt yeah like because now in brad pitt in his older age like in in in, in once upon a time in hollywood I was yeah. like, that's Robert Redford yeah. with the hair. Like, he was so Robert Redford yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah. It was it's so true. cool. Didn't Brad Pitt play his son in a movie? Oh, the river runs through it, right? Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he did. So, yeah, a, a Western is on my radar, too. I would love oh, to do, like, a dark yes. Western. Love that. Have you ever love it, love it. Doing, um, theater? Do you do theater? I did theater, yeah. I started in theater. Um would like to do that, but film, I think that's more of like, I want to establish myself so undeniably well in film and then and, and TV and just make this my, my, my core focus for the moment yeah. and be that actor that's like, you know, I can step aside and be like, oh, I'm going to do theater for a while, but I'll be back. Yeah. You know, right now, I yeah. feel like I'm, I'm still need to, I still need to hold my ground and solidify my position in a way, you know? Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. So okay. that's I, I the focus. That. Be on Broadway, you, you need to be a name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's, yeah, that's, that's Broadway what I'm thing. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, dude. So how are you doing though? How's, how's everything with you with quarantine? You know, everything is good. It's amazing. I, you know, I booked a gig while I was here in quarantine and shot it. 
that was like a, that's a, awesome. it's this new norm. So that's kind of been interesting. Um, I had a film that I was supposed to start March 15th that obviously didn't. Yeah. You know, so that's upsetting. But, you know, look, it's, you know, I'm so grateful that I'm healthy and that, you yeah. know, that, uh, you know, it, maneuvering through this with as much, you know, I mean, I, I like I, the other day I had, you know, I was sharing, I had like 3000 emotions and it had only been noon because I'm up and down, you know, I'm up and no, down. I it's like, you know, I, I watch the news, I see the, I see the death toll. I, I mm -hmm. think about, oh my God, I got to stay in here for another, another month. This is insane. What is happening? You go to the market, you see all the masks. It's like, I'm, I'm in a sci-fi movie. You know what I mean? I will be real honest and vulnerable here. I broke down crying two days ago. I just broke, I woke up in the morning and I broke down crying. It was just so much pressure of like i got into this mood where like i felt like i could i went outside and i came back and i washed my hands and then like i touched my phone and i'm like do i need to wash my hands again and i'm like oh my god did i touch my face like and it's yeah. like but i saw something and this goes out to i want everyone to hear this it's i saw this in, the other day and it, it was a quote that said um this virus has the ability to to kill you mentally before it ever touches you physically. So keep your peace, yeah. you know, and it's, we, it has ruined so much of my day sometimes where I'm just like, and I'm, I'm like, and then a couple of days later, I'm like, I'm still okay. And I've been careful, but my mental stress has been through the roof. And it's like, you know, keep your peace, 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 peace. Keep your peace. <laughs> you know, deep breaths and, um, you know, just realize that if you, it can kill you mentally way before it ever touches you. So, you know. Well, that's interesting you say that because I have been told for years that I'm a person who needs to meditate. And uh, three weeks ago, I started meditating. So I meditate every day now. And can I tell you something? It's really helping. It's yeah. really helping me. Like, if everybody else knew it's, you know, I'm not I'm the last person on the, you know, to, to get on the wagon here. And it's just, it's been incredible. It's really helped me kind of just, Mm -hmm. Get centered and just, uh, it really know, does just, you know, even if, and some people like some people talk about meditation and they get like, Oh, I can't do that. Or when, when people meditate and then they get like, they, they feel like they're doing it wrong. You know, like I've been there where I'm like, I can't get the thoughts out of my head. I feel like I'm not doing it right. And like, I feel like yeah. when I meditate, it's like, Oh, I want to have this like epiphany experience. And if I don't, it's worth nothing. But it's like, really, it really is like, Five deep breaths for twenty seconds incrementally or, throughout the day or can just half be an hour or half an hour or want, two minutes. I mean? Anything I mean, you don't realize what you're doing to yourself longevity wise. Just taking those moments of peace throughout the day. It doesn't have to be like you're sitting there and then you wake up and you're glowing yeah. gold or you know that's not what it is. That's not what meditation is. No, so. it's, just, it's just a slow a slowing down and just getting focused. My thing yeah. is focus right now. That's the thing I'm struggling with focus and i think mm -hmm. what it's because of is all the electronics all the electronics i mean i'm watching tv i'm on the thing you know i'm trying to like balance it out mm -hmm. but i find myself more on electronics right now which i'm grateful for because i really feel like people it's the only way to connect right now and i really think that's important but yeah it, like i noticed that it's it's messing with my focus you know what i mean this is what i've really tried to implement and and it's i think it's really helped me out is in the morning before i let my feet touch the ground like, yeah. and before, when I wake up, I just, I say, you know, cause what you want to do is check your phone and check your email and check your Instagram. And like, that's, but then your attention and your energy is completely demanded already and poured in a direction. It's, it's can stress you out. So I wake up and I just say, thank you for like my eyesight, my 10 fingers, my 10 toes, my two legs, the fact that I can walk, the fact that I can hear, like just little things that you don't usually like get thankful for it, but not everyone has, you know? Do, and the I start gratitude. Do the gratitude. Gratitude every morning, and it just starts my day better, and every problem that comes to me there on after is so much smaller, because I'm like, well, I'm still walking. Okay, like, it's it's fine. So I take like a, an, I take like a, there goes my cousin again, trading Darren's phone number for ownership of Microsoft, thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna have I'm gonna have your father drown you, Julian. Dude, you should be in, in Bitcoin now. Bitcoin's gonna be back. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have him grounded immediately. Um, but it's you know it's um because and so I try to have the first hour of my day and the last hour of my night with no phone and no Love TV that. 
And it's it's true. Like you know, blue light on your eyes is bad, and it's you you don't realize how fast your eyes are twitching and moving when you're reading comments. Like I, I watch my friends sometimes; their eyes, they're twitching, like having seizures looking at comments. Yeah, that can keep you up all night. Yeah, you know? and it affects your focus. It literally I mean, yeah. you'll have a conversation, and you'll be like, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. I mean, that's where my brain sometimes is working, and it's not. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, yeah. So I've been using Headspace. The Headspace app, guys, a little heads up, Headspace. I'm loving it. I'm yeah. loving it. What else is happening? So you know that you, um, so you know that, because uh, you live in LA, like I do, we're out of this quarantine on the 15th, right? So that means that businesses, no, that, that some businesses, some restaurants will be open, but I don't think theaters, I don't think mm -hmm. gatherings, right? That's what's on the table. Yeah, yeah. I, that's, I think it's just, you know, it's like phase one or something like that. We're just, you know, it's going to be somewhat back to, you know, normalcy. But I, um, I just really hope people, it's not like that case in America where it is usually all the time where it's like, give it in to take a mile, you know? Because I think they're going to be opening up beaches and it's like real easy for the first week to be cautious and then, oh, nothing happened. Great. Let's all not social distance and just go back to the regularly scheduled program, you know? Yeah. 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 So I think I'm still going to be very careful. Um, I, I'm a very affectionate person and I love hugging my friends and kissing them. I know. I've been missing and it. I, I'm yeah. not dying for that physical contact right now, you know? It's killing me. I know. My, I have my friend here. Uh, my friend's actually in the other room. He's he came to to. He's been quarantined. I've been quarantined, and you know he was like, "Dude, like, do you want to just hang out?" And I'm like, "All right, cool." But like, we're still social distancing even here, right? And it's so weird because usually it's so like, weird. "Hey, man, like, what's up? Give him a hug." No, nope, not this time. You know, it's yeah. like it's, so, yeah. it's sad. I have no judgment about people. In fact, my friend Jenna was talking about people who are kind of coupling together like friends, hanging out with friends that are both safe that have both been very responsible. I have no problem mm -hmm. with that because honestly, like you said, the mental thing of not being around people and being yeah. so isolated, I don't think that's, I don't think that's a good thing. I think that no. outweighs like you yeah. were the pot. We just sit on the, he came over, brought a couple of, I'll just be honest, brought, brought a case of white claws, which are these deathly alka or like seltzer water alcoholic drinks where <laughs> you feel like, oh, I'll have, they don't taste like anything. I'll have five of them. And then you stand up and then you sit right back down. And basically <laughs> like, Party kind of pretty Party much what it is. Karen. We're going to be seeing some wackadoodle selfies. Today yeah. You know, you know what's so funny though is that I get Asian glow. I get Asian glow so bad. So when I have two Asian white claws. Glow? What the I'm, hell is that? You don't know what Asian glow is? No. I, my face gets blood red if I ever drink alcohol. My face gets blood red. Oh, shit. I remember. Now you have a towel. You have a towel now. Oh, you want to no. know the funniest thing is that when I was being cast for Never Have I Ever, they were like in the final stages of choosing me or not. And I think like I came in with like facial hair or something yes. for a little bit for the, 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 the test. And they were like, they want to see what it's like clean shaven. And I was out at a Japanese restaurant and I had a, 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 a beer and a sahi. And my face was blood red. They were like, they want it right now. And I was like, all right. So I took the picture and my manager was like, why is it so red? I was like, you can just tell them that I have Asian glow, man. Cause that's, that's what it is right now. You know, I'm like, I'm being honest. And they all were like, he said it to him. And I was thinking like, great, there it goes. Like, you know, I was so in my head. That. Yeah. I and they were like, they were like, oh, uh, we love it. That's hilarious. Here's a, a theory. If you want to know where it comes from, this is what I've heard. Don't quote me on it. But okay. basically, so many Asian, um, Asian people in, in, in the bloodline have that we lack an enzyme that can, can convert alcohol as well. So it's almost like an allergy. And they say it dates back to like when it was the first times like filtering water where Asians would use tea, whereas Europeans would use alcohol. So there was like a natural immunity built up that was never built up in Asia. This is what I've heard. Could be totally wrong, but this is what I've heard. So if you have an Asian. Theory. I wonder if that's true. That could be an interesting theory. Seven times, seven to eight times out of 10. If you have an, you have, if you have an Asian friend, when they drink, watch their face. They'll probably get flushed. Well, now I'm on it. Now yeah. I'm on it. Okay, yeah. so what are you going to do today? So you're hanging out with your buddy. And then uh, what are you guys going to do? 
I have a general meeting at, at 3 p.m. today uh, via Zoom, and uh, we're we're working on you know a couple scripts. I have, I got. I can't say what it is. I don't even know if I should say it, but I got my first straight offer. <gasps> so I'm I'm reading it today for the second time, going through, if you know, just trying to digest it and see what's up. I want to make really great choices right now right. with with film, so I'm I'm trying to be careful, but I I need to give it another read through and just um, it's crazy, it's crazy. That's 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 so exciting. So I'm gonna read through that again, have a general meeting. Try and eat some healthy food, maybe work out, um, and then I don't know. The world, the world is our oyster within our own have apartments you been just, right now. Right? Have you been uh, having insomnia? Or you've been uh, keeping good sleeping hours. Like, are you going to bed later? Emily, I, I, my sister says I turn into a tomato when I drink. Thank you for that. I appreciate <laughs> it. She has. I love that we have your family here to fact check you. I love it. She, she, she's half uh, Lebanese. She's Lebanese, Japanese, and Swedish. So is she this the one that we think? be the makeup artist i think she should be a supermodel but she i don't know yeah i bet your family i saw a picture of your mom she's gorgeous she's my mom gorgeous. yeah she is she's so i'm sure your sister's very pretty okay so what uh what did i just ask you what what are you gonna uh what did i just ask you <laughs> i think what i'm gonna do and yeah i think i'm just gonna read uh do with my general meeting oh, try to reply to some fans have you been have you been having insomnia a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. My husband yeah. too. Because it's just, I don't know what, what does noon mean anymore? What does midnight mean anymore? Oh, you have, you have rock and roll hours right now. You have, yeah, like, like, you have like musician hours. My buddy and I were up last night um, and just like, we're like, it's 2 a.m. and we just finished the movie and we're like, should we play video games till like three in the morning? And we almost, we almost did. And then I was like, no, dude, I'm drawing the line. Like we cannot do this right now. We can't do it. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get back on the schedule. I want to be that guy that wakes up at like 6 a.m. and, you know, goes running and has the day started and, you know, early bird gets the worm. But right now it's so hard to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I think you need to be easy on yourself on that one right now. Yeah. Just let it ride. You're doing great. Dude, I am just so excited that we got a chance to chat. Look I'm so happy to. Oh my God, all these people. This is so I love exciting. It. I love it, love it, love it. Yeah, guys, thank you all for showing up. I love so all you guys. I'm going to try to reply to, I am dedicated to my fans, and I'm going to try to reply to some of your comments today as best I can. And, can you um, reply to them after the fact of this? No, no, I mean like on my, you know, in my DMs, my picture comments, like I, I try my best to, uh, yeah, to get I'm back so to him. Yeah, I'm so sorry. We got busy talking, guys. I, he didn't get a chance to respond, but. No, I, it's all good. I know he's been seeing a lot of these. It's all good. I'm so, so great. I'm and, so happy I got um, to see your face, TV mom. I know. It was so good to see you. Go have a wonderful day. Everybody stay safe out there. And uh, I'm just so excited. I'm so ex happy for you, buddy. Thank you so Thank much. You. I can't Maybe, wait to. We needed a little. I needed a little surge of good news. I needed a surge of good news. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for bringing it on to me. Well, I can't wait to give you a big old hug when I see you, and it's not, you know, potentially lethal. <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. Bye guys. Bye guys. Have Thanks for showing day. up. Love you, cousin. Love you, sisters. Bye guys. Bye, Darren's family. Thanks for signing in. Checking in with my peeps. Checking in with my peeps. If you're sitting at home feeling all alone, Laura's checking in with her peeps. We got Jesuit priests and fashionistas, artists and everyday peeps. If it's noon o'clock on Monday, Laura's checking in with her peeps. Well, the fit hit the shan with COVID. Laura said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get up on that Instagram live and I'll talk to folks like you. We'll tell a few jokes and sing a few songs, eat banana pudding and wear some wrong. All the quarantines will TikTok alone. Checking in with my peeps. Chicken in with my peeps, chicken in with my peeps. Well, the fit hit the shan with COVID, Lord, chicken in with her peeps. We got prison preachers and therapists and teachers, artists and everyday freaks. If it's noon o'clock on Monday, Lord, chicken in with her peeps. Every noon o'clock on Monday, Lord, chicken in. How y'all doing? With her peeps.